Shabbat Shalom. Nothing like opening up with a Torah procession to Nefesh Mountain and Valerie carrying the Torah. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, Father, we just thank you. Avenu Malkeno, our Father, our King, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for this day, for this Shabbat to be together, Lord, as Mishpacha, as family, Lord, to s celebrate you, to worship you, to draw near to Hear your voice, O oh God. We pray we would today. We pray we'd be shaped more into the image of our Messiah. We pray, Lord, we'd meet you, meet you, Lord, like never before. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we're going to sing the Shema to the Lord. So let's face toward Jerusalem as we sing. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kavod, Malchuto, Leolam Vahed. Hero Israel. 
the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his glorious name, whose kingdom is forever and ever. Love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Amen. And we're going to go right in. You may be seated, and we're going to go right into the Torah blessings, right? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry. You can... We're going, to, <laughs> we're going to say the blessing before the Torah reading. Jeff is away today, and uh, let's see. And Crystal, is Crystal here today? I don't see her because she's supposed to follow. What's that? Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to, uh, Susanna's going to read from the beautiful Torah, so portion today. So, Bar Huet Adonai Hamborach, Baruch Adonai Hamborach. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim Venatan Lano Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Shabbat Shalom Did you know that God likes sandwiches? You read the Torah Parshat this week and you find out that he likes sandwiches. Between the morning and the evening sacrifices, there are all these other sacrifices in between. They're sandwiched in between the morning and the evening sacrifices. And our parasha and other parashas throughout God's word says they were a pleasing aroma to God. Was it that he liked the smell of burnt meat? No. He loved the aroma of people's offering of obedience, their obedient heart. That's the aroma that was precious to God. And so when we obey God, that's a beautiful, sweet aroma. So our parasha today is Tzav, which means command. And I'll be reading from Leviticus, Vayikra, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the Torah of the burnt offering. The burnt offering should remain on the hearth atop the altar all night until the morning, while the fire of the altar is kept burning on it. Vayadaber Adonai el Moshe lemor Tzav et Aharon ve'et b'nav lemor Zot Torah ha'olah hi ha'olah ha'al Mokta al ha'mispeach al ha'layla Ad ha boker fe e shamis beach to kad bo. Amen. Praise the Lord. How beautiful. Please stay, rise. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lanu torat emet Vechaye olam natat betochenu Baruch ata Adonai Noten ha Torah Amen Thank you, Lord, for that beautiful reading of your word. You may be seated and... This is the anniversary of Rob Harvey's. Um, Rob went home to be with the Lord. Uh, it was just a, not this past week, I believe. Pardon me. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to do the Zod HaTorah. So it doesn't, it wasn't on here. So sorry about that. In just a moment, we are going to remember uh, him. And so let's, uh, 
But let's uh, thank God for his word as we say. Amen. So, um, good morning. Good morning. Are you awake? Yes. yes. Okay. I'm not sure yet if I'm awake yet. <laughs> you guys have seen my kids, right? Okay. Um, so, it's been a couple years since Rob Harvey passed. Um, Rob was um, our chief elder here uh, for a while, and... He was a guy whose life was so fully devoted to the Lord that he didn't just make a powerful impact here. He made a powerful impact on ministries across this country and around the world. And in fact, when he passed, he was in the process of helping um, a ministry out in California. And um, it was a big shock. It was sudden. And... He was greatly missed. Um, it, the interesting thing about his passing was it was right when we went into quarantine. So I think for those of us that knew him, that's what made us hardest was that we weren't able to gather to grieve and mourn over him. And so I think it's very appropriate that not only did we have a chance to honor the life of Samuel this year, but we're honoring the life of Rob as well. So um, I'm going to chant the Kaddish for Rob, but I just want to remind you, for those of you who are new to Messianic Judaism, I know we're having discipleship class today, um, in the Jewish community and how I grew up was that we really only said Kaddish when somebody died, and so you had this sense of this is a prayer for for mourning, this is a prayer that we say when, um, you know, only when we're grieving. But if we look at the words of the Kaddish, and it's honestly one of my favorite prayers because there is a good chance, it's in Aramaic, actually not in Hebrew, it's in Aramaic, and there's a good chance that this was common in the synagogue at, in Yeshua's time. And I've kind of pictured him in the synagogue chanting or, or saying this prayer, and when, when he says to his disciples, this is how you should pray, and he says the Lord's Prayer, I've always found it very familiar. It's always kind of reminded me of the spirit of the words of the Kaddish, because it's all about, it starts at least, it's all about who God is and why we should praise him. And the Lord's Prayer is the same, right? It's who God is. It's why we should praise him. That, that comes before anything. And so I've always wondered if that's why, as much as the disciples kvetched about things, they, they readily accepted the Lord's Prayer, right? Like immediately. They were like, yeah, okay, we can do this. This is familiar. And I've always kind of wondered if maybe that was the reason. So the words of the Kaddish all about praising God for who he is. He's the one that created this world according to his will. And we ask him, actually in the Orthodox, the words that they use actually asks him to send the Messiah during our day and the days of all the house of Israel. So that is part of the spirit of this prayer too. But today, as we remember the incredible life of Rob Harvey, we thank the Lord and praise the Lord for who God is in having allowed us to be part of Rob's life. It's God's all the it's Kadash May Rabba. Amen. They are Madi Virahi Rute, they are Lich Mahute, Behaihon Vyomehon. 
Chayed Chol Beit Yisrael Thank you so much, Crystal. Wow, how couldn't be more beautiful than that. Uh, wow, thank you. Thank you, Father, for Rob, and thank you for we know where he is, Lord. He's with you now, Lord, as our son Samuel, as Crystal just said, is. We thank you, Lord. Shem Yeshua. Uh, I'm going to ask if George would come up and pray for George and Maria. Maybe, do you want to come, or just maybe George wants to come up? Uh, George is going to come up and pray. Uh, his family was born is from Ukraine, and he, they do, he and his wife Maria do amazing ministry there, all in, speaks like seven languages, and um, they do a lot of ministry in all these areas, um, but he's going to pray for Ukraine, and then uh, Jennifer, maybe, will you do Etzchaim, she was, or is Crystal going to? She was all set, set to it. Either way, either, either way. Okay, whatever, either way, one of you, uh, we'll do Etzchaim, we'll leave the ark open until, and, um, but, uh, Thank God, you know, I don't know, I was thinking on the way here, we were listening this morning to worship, uh, you know, music, and just thinking, I, I was thinking of our son, Crystal, too, just, uh, you know, and just having a, you know, one of these moments with God, and just thinking, boy, this, just this life is so difficult here, you know, so miserable, and what's going on in Ukraine now, and, <clears throat> you know, there's just so much heartache, but it's so much better in the presence of God, you know, as we're listening to worship, it's so much better with Him where He is, and we're going to continue worshiping today. And so, but uh, uh, George, if, uh, which mic, you want to use one of those, that mic there, and would please take a moment and lead us in Ukraine, and we really appreciate it. Abba, we just come before you, Lord. We come with humble hearts, Lord. We come with heavy hearts before you, Lord. And Abba, we just cry out unto you. Abba, we just pray, Lord, for your perfect shalom to come over, is to, um, over the Ukraine, Lord. Abba, we just pray, Lord, for all the people that are there, Lord. Some of the Holocaust survivors feel like they're going mm -hmm. through another Holocaust, Lord. And they have lived through so much, Lord, and, and they have to relive it again. And Abba, there is just so, much, so few that are left there, Lord, and they 
just do not want to leave the land because they said they were born there and they want to die there, Lord. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, for your mercies. And Lord, we just cry out unto you and we pray, Lord, that you will just push um, the Russia back to its borders, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you're, you will just have mercy on the people in the Ukraine, Lord. Lord, on the Jewish community that is there and that is just fighting so hard, Lord, to stay alive and just to be able to eat and to drink, Lord. Lord, we just pray for your mercies. And Lord, that you will just come down and just cover them with your mercies and your love, Lord. And it's in Yeshua's mighty name we ask it, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Just, and uh, just tell us, if you would, just for a moment, uh, George, where, again, where you have uh, work in, in outreach in those areas, in these areas. What areas you do? Okay. Um, we've been to Odessa. We've been to Nikolaev. Uh, we've been to uh, Simferopol. Um, and there's uh, Jewish communities there that we have worked with. Um, and uh, we've been there for 20 years, probably. Um, and then we also work in Israel. And our heart has always been for the Holocaust survivors. And of course, our heart is for children. And we work with Holocaust survivors and the orphanages. And uh, we have one son, and he always told us he didn't want to have any kids for 10 years. That, and uh, so we always told the kids in the Ukraine and in Israel that they, they were our grandkids. And, you know, they, we treated them like our grandkids. And then my son decided he was going to have children. And now we have four grandchildren, so... And you're going to, thank you, you're going to have a table at the Passover Seder, aren't you, set up? Is that right? Um, yeah, the only thing is I didn't realize it was on a Friday. Oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, so we'll okay. discuss well, it. We'll discuss that. Okay, yeah. we'll see. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. Someone else can manage it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Okay. So please rise again. Um. I know we've been facing toward the synagogue when we do Eitz Chaim, and I kind of love that. Um, yeah. Um, Dr. Martina was telling us in prayer a couple weeks ago about this synagogue that she used to pass in Ukraine. And, um, you know, we've been hearing, I, I hope you guys have been hearing all these amazing stories of how the Lord is intervening over there, like missiles just falling out of the sky and bombs dropping on churches and just not going off and Russian soldiers wandering into the, to the villages looking for food and gas, and then people meeting them and ministering to them. Um, so there's all these amazing things happening, but she was telling me about this synagogue, and, you know, the, the culture I grew up in, the musical culture I grew up in with the liturgy, you know, it's from Eastern Europe. The music was written by all these great composers of Eastern Europe, and the, the cantors over there sing this amazing music, and I just... I see the synagogue in my mind as one of those places where this stuff came from and where these great cantors were singing with these amazing acoustics. And, you know, the synagogue, this synagogue is still standing, um, you know, but it's kind of empty right now because of what's going on. And so when we were praying, I was praying for the synagogue thinking, how amazing would it be if the next time people fill this synagogue, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit? And when they sing the liturgy, same liturgy, same exact service, same exact liturgy, but fueled with the Holy Spirit. So as we sing Eitz Chaim, maybe think of that synagogue and ask God to not just do this for next door, but to do this for that synagogue in Ukraine. So, Eitz Chaim, he lama. Shalom, 
Hashem. Praise the Lord. Greet somebody. Shabbat Shalom as the worship team comes to continue to lead us in worship. Shabbat Shalom. 
It is good to be in the house of the Lord. There's still room for dancers over here to our right, your left. If anyone wants to join these beautiful dancers over here. Praise the Lord. We serve a mighty God. Our God is the God of the universe. He is the God over the oceans, the skies, the stars, the sun, the moon. He is amazing. He is wonderful. And we love to worship him. So let us worship together. Abba, you are wonderful. You are supremely wonderful and awesome. We worship your mighty name. There is none like you. There is none on the earth, under the earth, above the earth. None compares to you. You alone are worthy of our praise. You alone are worthy of our worship. So God, we exalt you today. We exalt you and we declare your wondrous works. You are good and your love endures forever. So Abba, receive our worship as we come together and let us worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. The one who calms a raging storm. The one who walks upon the sea.
And you are holy. You are holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. A little while, a little. Um, uh, wow, what an amazing team. Thank you, Diane and uh, team. And uh, I'm sorry, was, <laughs> praise God. What an amazing team. I'm sorry, what are your team members again? Would you meant? I was to get you to introduce everyone. Praise God. Wow, they're amazing. Such a blessing. And children, yes. I, is, uh, am I doing the children's lesson? I am. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, the children would come up, and we're, we're uh, going to bless them all. Wow, isn't it great to see this yellow deem here? All these children, these young, young men and women. Soldiers in the Messiah's army, future great young men and women of God. So let's, uh, let's stretch our hands toward them and pray. And if you're at home watching online, please pray over your children. Bless your children. If your children are distant, which many of ours are in other places, let's pray this blessing over them as we, as we uh, say. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmorecha. Ya er Adonai Penav Elecha Vichinecha, Yisa Adonai Penav Elecha, Viasem Lecha Shalom, Vishem Yasar Hamashiach, Sar Ha Shalom, Amen, Va Amen, God bless you. Shall, shall, let's give them a hand. Praise the Lord, what a blessing. Thank God, thank you, teachers and helpers, assistants, for investing Ms. Yeshua's life in our children, the Word of God in our children. And we can all be helping. All be helping. Let Christy know if you can help in uh, with the children. Want to take a turn? We can all be rotating. If we're all helping, uh, it won't be. We can all be doing it every so often. It'd be great. So, uh, just quickly, uh, there'll be announcements. A few announcements at the end. Um, But uh, don't forget Messiah Conference coming up in July, and uh, July, first week in July, so put that on your, yeah, no, you can't see the screen there. They, they're trying to get the screen to work there, so I can, I, I never know what's behind me here. I mean, they could have funny old pictures of me, like I could be, you know. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but um, so the Messiah Conference is, uh, there's, a, eventually we'll get the screen here so I can know what's going on behind me. But... Uh, you don't want to miss that. If you can get away for the week, plan it in your calendar now. Um, fellowship with so many people. You'll meet, so, have felt friendships, relationships that'll be lifetime. Uh, renew, renew friendships. Uh, great teaching. Great. Oh, just there's so much. Anyone, ask anyone that's been to the Messiah Conference. It'll be the first time in, what, three years? So it's because of COVID. So it's going to be, what a time. Uh, music, worship, unbelievable, night after night and day after day, teaching classes that you'll just be, just so please. And beautiful central Pennsylvania, the soil is so rich there. It's just great, great time. Go and visit the Amish for, no, you won't even have time. But anyway, uh, so uh, you'll hear more about the Passover Seder. It's going to, I can't wait. We're so excited about that. But I do want to mention class today, the, the discipleship class. So that's going on today. So let's turn to, um, <clears throat> do you know these Hebrew words? Uh, see if you know these Hebrew words. See if my slide is up. Yeah, let's go to that first slide. Oh, let's let's uh, move on to a slide. Keep, I'll go back to that in a second. Go, there we go. All right. How many know these, all these words? All right. Can you say these words? Emunah. The root is aman. Emunah. 
Salah, Salah. Yasha, you would get Yeshua from there. Yeshua. Chaya, right? Chai, Chai, Am Yisrael, Chai. People of Israel, Chai, Chai, life. Tzedakah, right? Tzedakah. Tzedakah. Shalom, okay? Well, all those words are in this discipleship class. We're going to throw these. They're not really in this book, but we're going to throw them out today in our one-hour class from 1 to 2 p.m. So don't miss the first class today. And it's going to be great from 1 to 2. Uh, The books are for sale over here. If you don't have money for the books, we'll give you one. And you can give us a donation later if you have it. But whatever. Um, But we have books. We have should be enough for everyone. And it's really good. Messianic Jewish discipleship, Messianic discipleship class. It's going to be great for everybody. And it's a really good book by Dr. Sam, by Sam Nadler. So, Father, we pray you open our eyes to build wonderful things from your word. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. We pray, open our eyes and speak to us. We pray. Amen, but amen. So, yeah, we're covering in the book today, Getting, get, getting Started and Your Identity in the Messiah. That's what's in that. The, we're covering in the first Aleph section of the, of the book. There's four sections in the book. So, keeping the fire burning. Leviticus 6, verse 5 in the Parsha today, uh, which Suzanne read beautifully from earlier, but this verse, uh, verse 6, verse 5, chapter 6, verse 5, says, The fire on the altar is to be kept burning on it. And what must not happen to the fire on the altar? It must not go out. Yes, don't let it go out. That would be for the Beit Mikdash, for the temple. It was for the, both temples. It was for the uh, Mishkan, for the tabernacle before the temple. Don't let the fire go out. Now, Purim, Purim, is over. Um... Anyone get to see? Uh, there's some great, great videos that came out afterwards. We celebrated it early this year. Uh, maybe next year we'll do it on Purim itself, which was Wednesday night, technically. But we had a great service. It was so crazy. I love living in Nashville. 40 degrees from one day to the difference from one. <laughs> so we were like sub-degree freezing weather last week. And I know some of you couldn't come. Uh, and, and, but we had, a, but we had a, still a great turnout, you know. Um, and... Uh, and it was a great time. Uh, so we celebrated early, and uh, it, was, it was a wonderful time of celebration. And, um, but Purim is over, but the story of Esther and Mordechai really continues in Ukraine, Ukraine, in Ukraine with a present-day Mordechai in our midst, really very likely, um, many believe. President of... Well, yeah, I can't say Zelensky. I have a, now my, my mind's blank. Volod, what's his first name? Volodymyr. Volodymyr Zelensky in Kiev. Uh, I was in Kiev years ago uh, after it was just freed from communism. And, um, and, he, and you know the quote he said. Maybe you know the quote. He said, I need ammunition, not a ride, when responding to an offer from us, from the U.S., to help him evacuate. And uh, when a reporter asked him how he was doing, given the circumstances, here's what he said. He said, my life today is wonderful. He said, I believe that I'm needed. That's the most important sense of life, that you're needed. That, That you are not just an emptiness that breathes and walks and eats something. That's a great statement. I like that. Barry Weiss of Common Sense writes, I cannot help but notice the gap between them, the Ukrainians, and us. Between the bigness of their vision and their mission and the smallness of ours. Between the moral clarity and our moral, between their moral clarity and our moral confusion. Between their spine and our spinelessness. Between their courage and our epidemic of cowardice, how, could, how would we act if the guns were to our heads? Would we similarly feel no choice but to fight for our home, for everything we love? And she notes that while we're not in a physical war here, 
we are in an ideological one. And, that, and she says we're losing badly because we're, not, we're unserious. So Mordechai, Zelensky, and I know some say, well, maybe he's luring us into war and this is bad. And I don't know. I'm not a politician I'm not a, and I'm not a prophet. I don't, I'm not going to tell you. I could be, you know, these, you get into these areas, you have to be careful. We can all be wrong on, on things. But I'll tell you, we admire the courage of those people, no matter what. Anyone has to. And, and he's a leader that has mobilized their courage to stand for, for their homeland and not to give up. And millions of Ukrainian men and women fighting, fearless, on fire, and the fire is not going out. And here we have in Leviticus, or Vayikra, chapter 6, and notice, by the way, note, note that in your Bibles it might be like 6-1, might be 6-9 in your translation, depending on the translation you're, you're using. It describes what is called the Ola. Let's say the Ola. Ola. Sounds like hola in Spanish, right? Hola. <laughs> but it's spelled, you know, I in, and should be really, I think, a, a vav there, a whole, you know, and, uh, and then a lamed and a hey. Hola, the elevation offering, the burnt offering, which was the first sacrifice in the inauguration of Aaron and his sons, assuming the, the priesthood and beginning of their careers as priests or koanim. So it's difficult for us to visualize all of the animal sacrifices we see and the offerings and the blood, and we read about not having a temple today. It's difficult. And these were first brought and done at the tabernacle, the Mishkan, and then later at the temple, the holy temple, the Beit HaMikdash, the first and then the second temple. And so in verse 2 of chapter 6, command Aaron and his son, saying, This is the Torah of the burnt offering, the Ola. The burnt offering shall remain on the hearth atop the altar all night until the morning, while the fire of the altar is kept burning on it. So this offering, these were burnt offerings, one, on the, one in the afternoon eve, or the evening, so to speak, afternoon and evening, and one in the morning. <laughs> And the, the word ola means, it's from uh, ola, really from the root to rise up, to rise up. Why? It's totally, it's rising up to God. It's totally consumed. It's, it's an aroma to God. It's, it's totally consumed. It's burnt up until nothing is left but ashes. Unlike other sacrifices, none of it was eaten. It all ascends to God and then is discarded. The ashes are discarded. So maybe one application, it's a picture in one way of us giving our everything to the Lord, to the Messiah. We give our all to the Lord, right? To our Messiah, to our King. We give our everything. We give our all for the gospel. We give our all until we're consumed for his sake. Paul said, I am, give everything for the Messiah's sake, for the gospel's sake, 1 Corinthians 9, 23, and 1 Corinthians uh, 4, 5, he says, I do all things for Messiah's sake. Everything for your sake, for the Messiah's. He says, uh, whether in my body, whether I give my body, whether I live or whether I die in Philippians 1, 20, he says, for me to live is Messiah. For me to die is what? Is gain. It's better. We, we're consumed for his sake. It's, it's a, a beautiful picture of that. Nothing left. And in verses 3 and 4, the Kohen, the priest, is to remove the fat, the ashes uh, where, from where the fire has consumed this ola on the altar and put them beside the altar. Then he's to take off his garments, put on other ones, and carry the ashes outside the camp. Get rid of the ashes. It was an important job, not a menial job. There's no menial jobs in the congregation, by the way, putting away things that Bruce and other, some that help him, Thomas, I haven't seen him in a while. You know, people helping, it's, that's not a menial job. That's an important job. Just as important as everything all works together. Very important. And, and God sees it. And, uh, and in verses 5 and 6, the fire on the altar is to be kept burning on it. And, and by the way, I shouldn't just mention that. I should mention putting away 
uh, d dirty diapers in the, ch in the nursery, you know, or, or whatever we're doing, anything, things that people don't see. The fire on the altar is to be kept burning on it. It must not go out, verses 5 and 6. Second time he's saying it. Each morning, the Kohen is to burn wood on it, laying the burnt offering in order, in order upon it and burning up the, uh, as smoke the fat of the fellowship offerings. Fire is to be kept burning on the altar continually. It must not go out. So the fire never does go out. It, it was, it, it's not to go out. Now, let's say, let me say this. The fire of worship never goes out in heaven, I was thinking. In, you know, the heaven, you know, heaven is, how do you say heaven? Uh, um, Andrew, tell, us, tell everyone how to say heaven. In. Shemaim, right? Yeah. It's plural. It's a plural words. Really, heavens. You know, Paul speaks about uh, being taken to the third heaven, right? Uh, I think there's some rabbinic thoughts of seven heavens, you know, but whether, whether there's three or, you know, but it's a plural word. There's not really. So heaven is, I mean, but there's worship constantly going on. Always. Always. God is being worshipped. The Lord is being worshipped in heaven. It says there are seven torches of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. It says, now I don't know what that means. Maybe the seven spirits of God. Maybe the sevenfold spirit. Many believe it. Isaiah 11 talks about this sevenfold spirit of God. Uh, the four living creatures, they do not rest day or night chanting, Kadosh, Kadosh, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts, who was, is, is to come. We just heard, and maybe we'll sing, maybe we'll just sing that song in, now in a minute. The 24 elders fall down, the one seated on the throne, and worship him. Twelve, 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, singing a new song. The voice of many angels around the throne and the living creatures and the elders. Myriads, myriads, and myriads, thousands, thousands chanting with a thousand, a loud voice. And every creature in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea and everything in them, chapters 4 and 5 of the book of Revelation or the Apocalypse talking about this worship that's constantly going on in heaven all the time. The fire of worship, worshiping God all the time. Amazing. It never goes out. Maybe we'll do it at the end. We'll see at the end. Diane, we'll see at the end. This is a song that I wrote years ago to Revelation 4.11. But the fire must not die out in, at the temple altar. The temple altar. Think about it. During the day as well as the night. Now, even on the Shabbat, the Sabbath, fuel was to be placed on the altar. By means of the two daily burnt offerings, a perpetual fire was kept burning. Moses' altar, according to the rabbis, whether this happened up, but this is interesting thoughts in, in the Talmud, Moses' altar burnt for 116 years 39, uh, this is 39 years in the wilderness, 14 at Gil, in Gilgal, 13 in Nob, and 50 in Gibeon. Just interesting. According to Josephus, in the time of the second temple, there was a special day set apart, he says, quote, when it was customary for everyone to bring wood, any type, any type except olive tree wood or grapevines. When you go to Israel, everyone brings back, you know, you buy olive tree wood, especially up in the, uh, no, that's in Jerusalem, over in Jerusalem. You buy olive tree wood, but also Canary. And, uh, and they, they'd buy this wood for the altar, according to Josephus, bring this wood, rather, for the altar, not buy, bring it for the altar, and that, and that there uh, might never be a want of fuel for the fire, which was unquenchable, he says, and it was always burning. But how do I keep my fire burning? How do I keep my fire and my offering atop, my, atop this altar? How do I keep the fire from going out in my life? You know, Isaiah 4.4 4 talks about the spirit of burning, the spirit of burning. I want to give you several, ways, several thoughts. And the first is the word of God. Jeremiah 23, 29 says, God's word is as a fire. It's not my word as a fire and a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. God's word is a fire. 
Jeremiah says in chapter, he says in chapter 20, verse 9, it's, it, it, it quotes him saying, he says, when I tried to not talk about you, tried to be quiet, he says, your word was in me, a burning fire shut up in my bones. I couldn't keep the word of God. Because he hid the word of God, it was in his heart. Because we, when we hide the word of God, again, I say it all the time, you know, because I, I, I love it when Sabina Wormbrandt said, and I guess there's a film out on her now, um, that uh, so John told me uh, a, a beautiful uh, film, film on her, her life, but she said, I heard her, I remember when she was saying, she says, hide the word of God in your heart where no one can take it from you. You know, she was pleading with us. She says, hide the word of God, because they had no, no, no they known, they did that when they were in prison, communist prison in Romania, and they were, couldn't, didn't have a Bible. She said, hide it, it, hide it where no one can take it, no human being can take it from you. Psalm 119, 111, verse 11, of course, hide God, I word if I treasured or hidden my heart. That, you know, that, that, uh, and, and so we hide it in our hearts. And Jeremiah says it was, burnt, it was shut up in my bones. When the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob appeared and spoke to Moses, he spoke to him from a burning bush in Exodus chapter 3, remember? And I love this passage in Luke 24. Turn over there if you have your Bibles for just a minute. Luke 24, so you can see it. But if not, just listen. But this is a beautiful verse. Yeshua said, uh, the, the disciples, after Yeshua's resurrection, I can't wait. We're going to celebrate Passover pretty soon. It's in what, like four weeks, five weeks, six weeks? It's coming soon. I have to look on the count. It's like four or five weeks, right? How many weeks away? Help me out. Three weeks? Is that soon? No. Four weeks, right? I think like four, yeah? All right, well, Luke, 20, Luke 24, and we're going to, and we come to, pa, or, and, and in this after his, after Passover, and then his resurrection, the, the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, the, I mean, not the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, Passover and the resurrection, uh, and he's with his disciples before his ascension. He's with them, and remember, he's walking, and this is my favorite post-resurrection story, where he's walking with those two disciples, I love that painting of it, you know, where they're walking on the, you know, the, and they're talking together. And he said, they said in verse 32, did not our heart burn within us later after he sits with them? Well, he, he, they, 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 they get him to stay with them um, and to eat with him. Them. They convince him. They have to, he, he, he makes them persuade. He gets them to persuade him. He acts like he doesn't want to stay, like he's going to keep going. But they urge him, verse 29, to stay with us. Stay with us. It's nearly evening. And so he went in to stay with them. And then that's when he breaks the, uh, the matzah in verse 30. You know, it was matzah. Unleavened bread. It was matzah. And says the blessing, the bracha. And he broke it like we do on Passover. And, and then their eyes were opened. And then he, they recognized him then because they didn't realize it was Yeshua. And he disappears. And we believe it was, you know, that was, I think it was like the Afikomen revisited, you know. It was like, oh, my gosh, that's what you're, that's, this is what was happening. So, uh, but that, I love this verse, 32. They said to one another, didn't our heart burn within us while he was speaking with us on the road, while he was expounding, while he was explaining, or uh, what does it say here? Yeah, he was explaining, opening up. Yeah, King James says, opening up the scriptures to us. So opening up. So when God is speaking to us, you know, hearing God's voice through his word, through the Holy Spirit, it talks about the voice of the Lord is upon uh, the waters, you know, in Psalm 29. The word, the Holy Spirit upon the word of God, and we hear God's voice through his word, Holy Spirit through the word of God. There's nothing like hearing his voice. Uh, that ignites that fan of flame in our heart, in our hearts, into a fire, doesn't it? When we hear it. And what, were they, what was he speaking to them about? Well, look in verse 27. He says, was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer and enter these things, these things and to enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Torah and prophets, he explained to them the things written, what? About Who? Himself, yeah, himself in all the scriptures. Yeshua centered, Yeshua centered. Keep the focus on Yeshua, on Jesus, on the Messiah. He's the center. 
Nothing else. He's got to be the center. So hearing the voice of God through the scriptures. But Yeshua's centered teaching. It's got to be centered around him. Be careful of any teaching that gets off-centered, that gets on something else other than him. And I've said this again and again and again, and I'll keep coming back to it, because we've seen where people get off onto something else, and they focus more on that thing, and they get, and Yeshua becomes a side, almost like on a side issue, and he's just the, he's just the, you know, oh yeah, you know, he, he's important, but not as the central. He, they said, oh no. He said, it's all about the things concerning himself and that's what makes our hearts burn knowing him let us know let us press on to know the lord hosea 6 verse 3 his going forth is sure as the dawn i love that verse hosea 6 3 uh, trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge it means yada know him in all your ways know him it's the same word yada know him and he will direct your paths it's a fellowship. It's a relationship with him. He'll, he'll direct your paths. That, Paul says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. I want to know him in Philippians 3.10. It's all about this being centered on him. Thirdly, that's, those are two things. Third, a third, the revelation of his love for me. How do I keep my heart on fire? The revelation the, the revelation of his love for me as my bridegroom. Uh, in Song of Songs 8 verse 6, he says, Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Its flames are as flames, are, are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. When the Lord gives me a revelation of uh, his love for me, right? When he, think about it, when that's happened. When he gives a revelation of his love for you as he's the bride, he's the groom, you're the bride. He's your husband, you're his wife, you're, his, you're, you're joined to him. Uh, he that is joined to the Lord in 1 Corinthians six seventeen uh, is one spirit. We are joined to the Lord like Israel married to the Lord. We are joined to the Lord. We are uh, 2 Corinthians 11, uh, 1. We're, and that revelation, when God illuminates that, and, we're, and that relationship, that, that keeps our, us, keeps the fire burning. It ignites the fire. Another thing is sharing Yeshua with someone who doesn't know him. Also in Song of Songs, and I marked that in my Bible. I thought maybe I'll just read that too. It's Song of Songs chapter 5 is an amazing and we're not going to read the whole thing, but you read verses 9 through 16. In verse 9, it's interesting. She's kind of, I think she's been beaten up and she's, she's, she's in a, a, a difficult condition. And in verse 9, she's, she's, she's feeling sorry for herself. She's very filled with, you know, self, uh, you know, with, she's depressed. She's feeling all self, you know, uh, what is the word? I, anyway, she's, she's just down on, down on herself, down on everything, and she's, you know, self-absorbed. Uh, and then in verse 9, they, they, they question her. They said, how is your lover different from, all, from other lovers, O most beautiful among women? How is your lover different from other lovers you, that you so charge us? And then she starts to describe her lover. She starts to describe him. She says, my lover is dazzling and ruddy and standing at him. And she starts describing her beloved and she ends up coming out of her depression because she talks all about how amazing he is. And she concludes at the end, his mouth is sweetness. Yes, he's totally lovely. I don't like this translation on this, but he's totally desirable. This is my lover. Yes, this is my friend, oh, daughters of Jerusalem. You know, and she comes out of it because she's saying, he's awesome. He's amazing. There's no one like him. Now, did you ever notice when you start to talk to someone else about the Lord and you share how, what he's done, that no matter what you are going through, it doesn't matter anymore. It takes you out of your little world and the little problems you're and the things, and they all become, they become very little, and you say, it's all about him. He's so great. It's so amazing. You've got salvation. You've got eternity to look forward to. Share your faith. Share it with someone that doesn't know the Lord, that says, What's the big thing? I feel so bad. Listen, I feel so bad for someone that has a worldview that has no hope in it, that has no belief in eternal life, that has no notion of what happens when we die. 
Don't you? I mean, I feel bad. I thought of that. Then I said, oh, my gosh, I, I watch a certain program. I know I record, you know, of a certain <laughs> news program, you know, and I say, he's great. I love his views on news. Say, but how sad I'm praying for. Gosh, give him a revelation because he doesn't believe in you, God. He doesn't know you, you know. And how, how, uh, how sad if someone doesn't know what happens when we die and says, maybe there's nothing else. I don't know. It's all over. That's it. No, there's so much. So, but share your faith with someone. Share the Lord. Share Yeshua. When we say your faith, you know, share him who is the faith with someone. And uh, then, then uh, another thing that get, keeps the, gets the fire going is serving, giving to others. You know, as we serve, Romans 12, 11 says that that will stir up the fire. Uh, the Lord will give back to you as you give out. God Yeshua said, give and it will be given back to you. You know, Proverbs is filled. You start giving, you give and start serving someone else and God will, uh, you'll be surprised what that'll do. Community, kahila. You know, the word kahila for, to, for the, 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 the body of Messiah, the, the church, the kahila, the, the synagogue, whatever term we want to use. The, you know what, what it means? It means we mobilize for a purpose, mobilize for a mission. We gather together. You know, one piece of wood will burn out, but together we burn well. You know, we burn well. And we're on mission together. We, we pray together. I remember that story, and that's another one. Pray, well, that's the last one, praying. But, but uh, you know, the story of Charles Spurgeon, uh, I mean, we heard that, you know, the great preacher in England, you know, had such revival. They say there was so, much, so many people coming to the Lord, and they said, what's the secret of, of, of this? What, how many people come along? He said, oh, let me show you. There's a, we, have a, it's the, there's the, we have a great power plant here. Uh, and they said, let me show you the power plant. And he took them uh, down below into the basement, and there were all these people praying, you know. And he says, there's the power plant. You know, this is all the people praying. So it, it's, the, the wood had to constantly be replenished on the altar. Ashes had to constantly, have, had to continually be removed. And the fire grew low. Uh, if the fire grew low, the Kohen had to, needed to stir up the flames to life again. Much more than just flicking a switch or pushing a button, it took constant upkeep, a, a lot of effort and diligence. So this is, this is the idea. We need community, we need community, and then we need prayer. And, and in closing, I want you to think about it. You know, in the end of the age, as we approach Yeshua's return, and his soon return, many, the, the scripture says in Matthew 24 that many will be led astray uh, by those claiming to have been sent by God. It says, it says it several ways, and I'll just quote a little of Matthew 24 here. It says they'll be claiming to be sent by God and that they have the solution and that they have the remedy. In other words, be careful. There will be wars and rumors of wars. Nation will rise up, Yeshua said, against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Are we going to have World War III? Are we going to have nuclear war? I don't know. Is it possible? It certainly is possible because eventually the end of the world is going to come and Yeshua is going to return. World War Z, I don't know. I saw that recent, not too long ago. I like that movie. It was a pretty good movie. <laughs> so bad. But you know what? Uh, it, you know, they're seriously saying, I mean, if, it, if, if things were nuclear missiles are launched, there's really nothing. We, we can't, we're not like Israel. We can't just, fight, you know, knock down all the local missiles. It's not like that. I thought it, maybe it was, but they're saying it's not like that. You can't do it if thousands of missiles are all, are, 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 of warheads are, are leashed, unleashed at the same time. But who's ultimately in control of all of it? The Lord, right? He's on the throne. We don't have to panic. Uh, we're, it's not going to do any good. We, we, we pray. We fight the, against injustice and evil uh, and, do, and do everything we can. And, but we're going to get the gospel out. We're going to do everything we can to do what God wants us to do. And it, Yeshua said, we will be introduced to persecution and martyrdom. I don't look forward if that happens. And we become the object of hatred, he said, by all nations because of following me. He said, following Yeshua. He says, many will fall away and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. Because, of law, because lawlessness, lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. Many will grow cold. Their fires will go out because of lawlessness increasing. 
but it doesn't have to for you. It doesn't have to for me. And Yeshua said, but the Besorah, the good news, the gospel, will be proclaimed in the whole world, and then the end will come. So let's be faithful in taking the gospel into all, the whole world, and we'll have done what God wants us to do, right? And we're only for a little while anyway. Um, and let's let our fire keep burning for the Lord. And we're going to see great things happen before, before that time comes, we pray. Fan into a flame, 2 Timothy 1, 6. So fan into a flame, stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands, Paul told Timothy. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's not given us a spirit of fear or cowardice, fearfulness, but of power and love and a sound mind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your your faithfulness, your commission for us, Lord, what you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for the fire on the altar. Lord, help us to keep it, keep the fire stoked, Lord, keep the wood on it, and help us, Lord, to be faithful, found faithful, because you're faithful to us. You will never, never deny us, Lord. You said we're faith, you're faithful to us. So we want to be faithful to you. We love you and praise you. If you've never received Yeshua, you're listening to this, whether you're here today or whether you're watching online, you've never trusted Yeshua, made that initial step, please take it now. Just say, humble yourself. Say, Lord, I need you. Come into my life. Rescue me. Lord, thank you for dying for my sins. I turn to you for forgiveness, for a new start. In Yeshua's name, come into my life. Give me that new start. He will do it. He will light the fire. Turn on the, light the fire in your heart and give you that new start. Let us know. Pray with someone here afterwards. If you're here, write us. Let us know. I'm going to turn it over to Gary. Thank you. Rabbi gave us a, a lot of great things, especially me, for leading in on serving. So um, if you're new and if you've never been here before, we'd like you to go ahead and fill out a connection card. You'll find them right over there to my left. Uh, fill it out, put it in, and we'd like to be in contact with you, especially the guys. If there are folks, uh, men here who um, uh, have uh, just got here, please fill in your uh, email address, because I'd love to include you in the men's Maccabee for uh, Wednesday night. So, um, Membership, I uh, just want to remind you that we would love to go ahead and, uh, and if you want to find out about membership, uh, Beverly's not here today, but you can ask any of the elders, myself, Jason, uh, Sean, or any of the, the leaders about membership. Uh, we definitely uh, could use your help and have you join. This is a foundation. Uh, this is a congregation that is in a rebirth. Uh, we need you, uh, and you're going to be part of something really special. So we've got, uh, we need help, uh, Oneg help. My wife is, uh, I call her the food czar, but she's uh, in charge of putting all the food and stuff together, and we've got a great Oneg today. We've got bagels that I get from H&S Bagel. Oops, I guess I shouldn't have said that. Copyright. But uh, down is a New York bagel, and it's delicious, and all gluten-free stuff, and yada, yada, yada. So um, Rabbi said uh, that you are needed, right? There's no menial jobs. That is so true here. Uh, how do I keep my fire burning? Uh, give, and it'll be given back to you. Serving stirs up the fire. See, Rabbi, I was listening. Um, so we are definitely Yeshua-centered, and I'm going to move out of the way here so I can see the, uh, the thing, the announcements myself. So um, the first one will be our Passover Seder. So our Passover Seder will be April 15th. It is actually um, Good Friday, and we are pleased and we're thrilled to have it at Plaza Mariachi. Um, it's, going to be, it's going to be an amazing. See? Como estas, right? I'm learning my... my I, I took years of Spanish, and I'm trying to 
practice again. So, um, But it'll be uh, April 15th. Adults will be 12, uh, children 5. You can uh, register on Eventbrite. In fact, we encourage you to please register now, okay, so that we can get all the cold OD people because it's going to be opened up uh, with Plaza Mariachis, all the folks that um, are connected with Plaza Mariachi, it's going to be getting filled up. We're expecting quite a few people. So next it will be our discipleship class, as Rabbi mentioned, this afternoon between 1 and 2.15 today, um, and uh, led by Rabbi Ken and Francis. Um, next... Uh, is there a Davidic dance class today? There is. Okay. And that is uh, going to be in the community room between 1 and 1.30. And also, uh, those of you, I was talking to a gentleman today who wants to do Hebrew. Suzanne will be leading the Hebrew class next week uh, in room 311 from 1 to 3 p.m. Okay. Next week, there will be a worship jam session. That sounds cool. That is, that sounds, I, I mean, I'd love to participate in that if I could play an instrument someone of these, someday, I hope, uh, too. But uh, this will be at Andrew's home. Andrew, stand up. Introduce Andrew. Raise your hand. If you're interested, please uh, see Andrew. It'll be at his house. Uh, so speak to him or Crystal. Okay. Uh, there is a weekly Zoom Havara on Friday night with David Mack. If you are interested, uh, it will, it's actually, it actually starts now. David uh, emailed me the other day because I told him I was a little, I couldn't get there at 6, but because the sun's going down later, amen, right? It now starts at 7 p.m. And if you're interested, it's uh, teachermack at gmail.com. He will send you the link, Okay. Uh, Murfreesboro, uh, Havara, Jason and Christy, uh, Jason, our assistant rabbi, and Christy, our, uh, pro our administrator, run that. It's Thursday. The next one will be Thursday, April 21st at 530. Sign up by texting the number or get in touch with Christy. And I will be leading a follow-up to today's class on, um, on the Messianic Discipleship. If you are interested in, uh, in, if you have any questions after today's class, you'd like to join. Uh, if you're online and you haven't been able to get to the class, email me, okay? Email me at coheng01 at me.com, and I will send you the Zoom link for Tuesday. It's going to be at 7.30. And the next women's meetup is uh, April 7th. And last but not least, uh, our offerings. Zadik box to my left. Please uh, feel free to give. And that's it. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Gary. I think we need to get that. Uh, we also have the Wednesday night men's group. I think it's not on. Yeah, I think it's not on there. So we need to. The men, Wednesday, we have, always have that. Email me again. Email Gary about that. Yes, yes. Men's group. Good men's group. Let's stand for the, so that's Wednesday at 8 right now, 8, 8 to 9 p.m. Wednesday, uh, men's Zoom. It's a Zoom, Zoom uh, Bible study. Bible study. We're going through Timothy, First and Second Timothy. Okay. Uh, thank you, Father, for this time. We're not going to do that song because it's too much. To we just bless you, Lord. Thank you. Yivarechicha Adonai v'yishmorecha Ya'er Adonai p'nave lecha v'yichunecha Yisa Adonai p'nave lecha v'yasem lecha shalom B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach Sar HaShalom Adonai bless you and keep you Adonai, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Adonai, turn his face toward you and grant you his shalom. In the name of Yeshua, the ruler of peace. Amen. Shabbat shalom. If you need prayer, please come up for prayer. We'll see you.
at the UNIC and at class after that. <laughs>